Welcome in, everybody. Let's see how we're doing. Good night, good morning, good evening. Wherever you are, I'm happy to see you. It is Nicole Victory Speaks, the voice of victory and your mental fitness coach. Now, you're listening to the sounds of Calabash and hopefully all is well in your world and hoping all is well in my world too. Tonight's going to be cool. This sound. Oh, I would tell you, every time I listen to Calabash, I, I, I must, I probably may need to change my, my intro sound because it just makes me feel like, you know, doing a little salsa. You know what I'm saying? It is a great day. It is International Women's Day. It is mental. No, it's actually not the day. It's the week. It starts this week, March the 1st. Now, we're going to get started in a couple seconds officially but before we get started if you didn't get that drink if you didn't get that snack if you didn't get that notepad now's the time because you know when you have an inspired conversation with a friend there's always a wisdom key and a wisdom nugget for those of you tuning in live and on the replay this is calabash led by anthony pierre those are the songs of the music that you're hearing welcome to the victory speak show it's the Inspired Conversation series where iron sharpens iron. You know what? That's you. That's me sharpening each other. And I'm your host, Nicole Waldron, your voice of victory and your mental fitness coach. And I'm on a mission, people. I am on a mission to inspire you to live a victorious lifestyle. The Inspired Conversation series is just one of the ways that I hope that I can do this to your life and in your life. You know, we have many conversations all the time, good, bad, funny, you name it, we have it. I know I've had countless conversations, inspired conversations with many people during my lifetime. And it's been a lifetime. I'm over half, I'm half a century now and, and then some. But you know, I thought sharing is caring. And I wanted to share some of these inspired conversations that I've had with friends along the way, that I've had with new friends that I've met, I've had with all sorts of people, all walks of life. And I just wanted to be a part of that with you because together we have to live a life of victory. Now on this International Women's Day, Women's Week, Black Mental Health Week in Toronto, I don't know where you're tuning in from. Wherever you're tuning in from, let me know because I love to shout out your country, your city, your province, because you know what? We all got to come together in love, light, and in truth. So tonight, I have a really special guest. She's a friend of mine. I'm excited, I'm tongue-tied because she's just super califragilistic espialidocious. Connecting people is a lifelong passion for her. She is an award-winning creative entrepreneur, public speaker, and the founder of How She Hustles. Yes, Miss Emily Mills. In 2010, she launched How She Hustles, a Toronto-based network that connects diverse women through social media and special events. With a small but mighty freelance team, Emily leads this community with a digital reach of, are you ready for this? 18,000 diverse women. Woo! I'm just, I'm just giving it up for Emily right now. Through her network, she has produced 20 plus sold out events at Startup and Slay, the digital series for a diverse female and non-binary entrepreneurs sponsored by CIBC, Roger Sports and Media and Shopify. These online and offline events attract women from across North America and beyond with up to even 400 guests. Can you imagine? Emily has also hosted a round table with Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, and was invited to meet former First Lady Michelle Obama. Mm, we got to talk about that meeting because I want to know what it was like. Before becoming her own boss, Emily worked as assistant diversity producer at CTV at Chorus and as a freelance music culture writer. Hmm, music. Hmm, do you know she loves music? Let's see what we're going to find out about this musicologist. She was a senior communications officer at CBC, one of Canada's largest media companies. In 2017, she created Her Story in Black, 
a digital photo series featuring 150 inspired Black women. This project, let me tell you, was phenomenal. The project earned national press coverage and it became a one-hour TV documentary led to an unprecedented celebration and won CBC's, watch this, President's Award. Woo! I'm just giving it up for Emily myself right here. I'm celebrating. I hope you're celebrating with me. Give her the hearts. Give her the flowers. Now, you know, Emily is very humble, so she's probably not liking the fact that I'm calling out all her accolades, but that's too bad. It's my show tonight, and I'm going to give it up to her. I can see her face in the background, but I'm, I'm just going to pretend I'm not seeing it. Emily was named to WXN's Top 100 Canada's Most Powerful Women list in the inaugural Mercedes-Benz Emerging Leaders category. She is profiled in the 100 Accomplished Black Women Canadian book, and she has received the Ryerson University Alumni Achievement Award. She was named a Civic Action Diverse City Fellow and is a member of BMW Foundation's Responsible Leaders Networks. Can I tell you, she's phenomenal. She is totally phenomenal. Now, one of the things I want to highlight about her, especially as it is International Women's Week and Month, she was one of 16 Canadians appointed to the National Committee for Women Deliver, the world's largest conference on health, rights, and the well-being of women and girls. Emily is also a frequent public speaker, and she has led conversations for the United Nations, the Economic Club of Canada, Twitter Canada, Twitter Canada, the Matri Canada. Let me tell you, Emily is slaying it. And if you want her to talk to you, you want to engage her after this show, you know, you might, I might need to become her agent. I wonder if I can get 10%. Anyways, I'll be good. Emily is a graduate of Ryerson in New York University and holds a degree in journalism and music and has studied public relations. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to the Victory Speak Show, Emily Mills. I'm just saying, Emily, I'm bringing you to the stage. Pa 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 pa, pa 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 pa. Woo 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 woo. I know, I know. <laughs> Let me tell you, you are lucky that we're in two different places because you are absolutely right. I do not like all the honorifics. I would have just said, "This is Emily." This is my people. I'm humbled to be here. The most important thing I would say is human, I hope, good friend, I hope person of integrity, very proud to be a family woman, um, daughter of immigrants. That's the stuff that matters most, you know? I love that about you, but I know that about you, but there's some people that are gonna be listening to this live and on the replay who have never yeah. met you. And I know if I were to ask you about all your stuff in this interview, you would not answer me. So I had to get it off at the top when you weren't on screen and pretend I wasn't seeing you and bam. Uh, I want to okay. welcome I want to welcome people watching. June Doyle is watching all the way from Trinidad and Tobago. Come on in the sun, my gosh. Oh, hello. Oh, here is tuned in. <laughs> yeah, just tuned in. I tell you the people are in the house. Show some love to Miss Emily Mills. Good evening, Miss Joan. Good evening, Miss June Doyle and all of the awesome followers, supporters of the work you've been doing. I have to See, we had quite a debate because we know each other. And I was like, can I just interview you, Miss Nicole? Like, can we just no. do it that way? On your um, show, you can. But yeah. <laughs> we're always interviewing everyone. And I think it's time for us to interview you. Good night, Paula. Great Hello. to have you here. Hello. Good evening, Miss Paula. You know what? I, I'm, I'm really humbled. I've been watching what you've been doing, of course, cheering for you. Um, just incredible work. And to know that you've been doing this in the midst of it all, like that's inspiration right there. Like really, you deserve your flowers for doing this week after week, sometimes multiple times a week, putting our community on the map, giving the respect, the spotlight, the platform to our community to be seen and to be inspired at a time when we need it most. So I'm giving you a big shout out. Thank you very much for all. Okay, I, I will receive it because I was told I have to learn how to receive my blessings, you know? Yes. I got I to gotta learn how to receive my blessings. Um, one of the things you mentioned is, yes, you, you came in there, you know, a daughter of immigrants. What was it like growing up as a first generation Canadian 
and, and a black Canadian to boot and a woman. Oh my God, that's like three things. Right well, there. well, my parents would be because they came and they got their citizenship. So my mom is proud Jamaican. And then dad is uh, from Antigua. Uh, so, you know, I'm very proud of my Caribbean roots and being born and bred in Toronto. I am holding that Canadian flag high. Yes, we have a lot of things we need to fix in this country. We have a lot of messy history. We are reckoning with some things. Yes. But I am so proud of my history. Actually, before this live today, I had a chance to speak to my grandmother in Antigua. She's 95 years old. Both wow. of my mothers, they're both alive, uh, in good health. They are clear minded and they are like my grandmother was talking to me about what Donald Trump's next move is. Okay, and why okay. not, and <laughs> why she get a COVID vaccine. COVID vaccine. She's 95 and she's talking to me about what's on CNN. And it just, you know, during this pandemic, I was very fortunate. Everybody's talking about how difficult it is. And it is. Yeah. One of the big blessings of this time is exactly that we have time. And so I was able to convince my parents to sit down and allow me to interview them, Ooh. which was huge. So many of us don't have the opportunity to really talk the things with yeah. our parents, yeah. you know, out of respect for them, out of their journey, out of what they've been through. And I think it takes a certain level of maturity. You know, mm -hmm. even though I'm grown, my parents are my parents, you know, there's yeah. so many yeah. things that are off limits, but that has been one of the big blessings of this time and it really allowed me to go back and be even more proud of where i came from to really hear the story directly from my mom directly from my dad about their journey to canada starting a life starting a family building a community building their careers and so i walk with that legacy well proud i mean like i i ready to tell granny listen after covid uh we go into antigua and we come in to visit because the clan needs to come down to this the, the beautiful, small, but powerful island of Antigua. And then we're going to hop over to like Dominica. Yes. Yeah. Not the yes. Dominican Republic, Dominica. And, and, and you know, yes. some good food and thing. Yes. And let me make sure so I don't get in trouble. Sorry. That's Antigua and Barbuda. And Barbuda. Yeah. That's like the people who yeah. say, let's not get into island politics. Because <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. That's like when they say just Trinidad and they don't say Tobago. That's right. You know, that's Joan right. Pierre's like, um, uh, Joan already pack her bags. She's like, <laughs> I agree, one hundred percent. We good. We good down the road. Okay, yeah. don't pay it too much, you know. So, you you've grown up here. What do you enjoy about being Canadian? Because you're a winter baby, right? And yes. I think it's, it's such a surprise when I when I talk to you. Um, I was I sometimes I'm just so surprised by some of the things I find out about you every time we talk. <laughs> I love. I really am honored to have been able to travel this country. Um, for anybody who's, especially if you're a woman of color, mm. a black woman, you need to, to, to embrace this country if you haven't done it yet. I remember when I finished journalism school, life was a little turbulent and I decided to go on my first national adventure in Canada hopped on a train, on a via rail train, and decided to go right from Toronto all the way to Moncton. So went out to the East Coast wow. um, and then went all the way to Vancouver. It took me a month on a via rail train uh, and I stopped along the way. To be a young black woman traveling through the prairies, couch surfing, seeing our museums, our national monuments, seeing how black communities and indigenous communities and just people live across this country was incredible. I didn't do that during the winter, but I say that because I remember it as one of my Canadiana moments. And so that spirit has continued. I love being outside in the winter. I am beaver tails, <laughs> bargaining. I need some beaver tails, come on listen, now. Listen, listen, I am maple ice cream. Like I'm all for the Canadiana stuff. But at the same time, very proud. Like, yo, yesterday I threw down in the kitchen, made some ackee and selfish and dumpling for my kids. Culture, our culture is so rich because nobody can tell me that I'm not Canadian. Right. That's, that's true. 
And, yeah, and you, like, you like to make snow angels because that's I like, do. I do. Makes you can, that, <laughs> and I think, no, but on a serious yeah. note, you know, we're at a time now where identity is a really big thing. And we have to decide as people, who are we going to let define who we are? Mm. Right? And nobody's going to tell me that I am just one thing. I'm just a black, I'm just black, or I'm just a woman, or I'm just this. I am proud to be Canadian born with Caribbean roots, you know, married into African roots, you know, all of those things, proud of my gender identity, tr proud of so many things that yeah. make up who I am. And um, part of that identity also comes responsibility. And that's part of my Canadianness that I wear proudly on my sleeve as well. It's not just about being like, yeah, I'm Canadian, but also I'm Canadian, which means I have to be part of the work that we need to do in this country. And we yes. already know all the issues we're dealing with right now. Everybody, whether you just came or whether you've been here for a while or whether your parents came here, we all have a role to play in trying to build the country we want to live in and that we want to be a part of. What are some of the issues that stick out to you that you would you say, you know, responsibility that you uh, want to play that role and that part in? Missing and murdered Indigenous women is a big one. Wow. Really, it is uh, something that I think Black communities and Indigenous communities, we have so much that we can talk about. We have very different walks and very different journeys. And yet, mm -hmm. there are so many experiences where you can see some parallels. Mm -hmm. uh, I think as well, obviously, anti-Black racism, come on, that's, that's a global yeah. issue. Yeah. There's no doubt we have to address that. I think we have been very proud as Canadians to sit and say, oh, well, we're better than the United States and we don't have this. I have pure family in the Caribbean, um, also in the United States, and we can't just pat ourselves on the back anymore. Some nasty things are happening in our country that we need to address right now. And it's not just small town Canada. Yeah. It's not just backward thinking. Like We have some, some, some real coming to terms that we need to deal with right away. So those two, homelessness and... Um, people who just don't have the economic means. I mean, any of us. In a minute, could be home, become homeless. Especially yeah. especially now in COVID. You know what? One of the things, you know, people say that, you know, you're upset about COVID-19. I always like to find the opportunity in the crisis. And um, what we went through with COVID, what we went through with George Floyd and, and every uh, person that was affected in a violent way because of their race. Um, last year in particular, actually allowed our voices to be heard in a way it hasn't been heard before. Mm -hmm. And it couldn't be ignored in a way because everybody was sitting at home and they were seeing it and they were feeling it. And companies that, that weren't really responding before that were just giving us the lip service are actually putting um, some actions behind it. And to me, that's some of the opportunity in this crisis that I see. Um, and, and, we can speak in a way that's unapologetically. That before that we were, even though we may feel a little angst, and I don't know about you, sometimes you still feel a little uncomfortable, but now we're, we're coming through bold, like, and we got our people, like people are just like, you know, you got your sister on your left or your brother on your right, and somebody's got your back because no matter what, you know, like when, when you're watching this phenomenon unfold, what does it, what does it mean to you? What is it saying to you as you're saying, being able to voice certain things that you've kept inside? I know for so long. It's a new, it's a new day in a way, but I'm very aware that the sun is just coming up. Mm. Like that's how it feels, you know, like yeah. don't get too excited. Yeah. We're just at the beginning. The conversation is one thing. The action, the follow through, the sustaining is a whole other thing. You know, we were just talking about offline, for example, how many black faces we're seeing on national television right now, in yeah. commercials, on ads and billboards, which is incredible. You know, we didn't need a whole, unfortunately, it seems like we did, but I didn't need a commercial on TV to figure out that black people did laundry. 
<laughs> like, hey. you, know, I, I, you know, I, I, I knew we did laundry. I, I knew we went banking. I knew we drove cars. I knew we had businesses. And now all of a sudden, black people are on everything, which is a start. But I think the bigger conversation, you asked me what work needs to be done. It's not the performative inclusion. Mm. It's what change is really being made and is going to be sustained. And I'd like to see a year from now, because remember, even when we talk about her story in black, yeah. thank you for mentioning that very kindly in the introduction. Next year is going to be the fifth year anniversary from when her story in black debuted. Mm -hmm. All of those women, whether they were neuroscientists, yeah. architects, police officers, it'd be very interesting to go back and look and see how many of those women moved up. How I was many of thinking that? Yes. Yes. And how many of those women found success on their own terms? And the other thing that's really interesting, I was reading the Globe and Mail the other day. They had a they're doing this whole series on power and gender. And in one of the articles, they were talking about law firms and how many women of color had been appointed and moved up in a particular firm. The interesting part, though, is they talked about how many of those women were women of color and how many of those women of color were actually in some of the lowest uh, percentage of compensation. So even though there were more people and it looks more pretty, it looks more colorful. What does that actually mean? Is it simply perpetuating the same inequalities that already existed before? So you moved up, but you're still mm. at the bottom, right? So I think these are some of the things that need to be addressed. It can't just be about, yay, we're all seeing all these black women out there all the time. Yeah. But when we actually start to measure are these tangible, concrete advancements for our communities? That's that's so true. And I just want to take a minute to, to just refresh our conversation and just welcome everybody who's listening live and on the replay. We're getting some really great stuff here. Um, you know, oh, look at them. Hello, beautiful ladies. This is coming from all the way in the United States, Mrs. Hamlet. Uh, Dr. Really? Vibe is like Emily's dropping knowledge bombs already. But these is like right. <laughs> oh, you hello, know? Dr. Vibe and Dr. Dr. Vibe is sustainable that. changes. Joan yeah. is like, yes, M, that's a must. And you know what Dr. Vibe said, right? It has to be measured. It has to be measured. You know. Um, yes, I'm. I'm go. I'm so far and keeping safe. Joan is like, hi, everybody. <laughs> We do, we do. And I, I think, you know, when I, I, I thank you, um, Nicole, for this platform, because what you're doing is allowing people to tell their own stories Yes. of whether they feel like things are progressing or what more, what work needs to still be done. Yes. And that's a huge help. Hopefully the right people are listening. And I, you know, and I hope so. And I, and I hope that people will, will take this conversation and share it and they can share it you know, to their friends. If you're listening live, share it out. If you're listening on the replay, share it out. Your voice matters and our voices matter. Mm -hmm. And um, I know you have been through. And, you know, when I think about it, you went to journalism school and you also had this piece in music. When I, when I listen to you narrate and you're such a great storyteller and telling of the stories, what made you choose, you know, journalism and this storytelling and the, the importance of telling people stories? <laughs> I'm going to laugh because the truth is the short answer is because I knew that I would never be duly black. <laughs> I, I, I really, I, I always have had a heart for music, uh, started like many people, you know, piano Royal conservatory on Bloor street, and then start playing saxophone in grade school. I had wait, a wait, 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 what, what, what? Saxophone. Oh, you didn't know I played. Okay. So come on. I played, now. <laughs> I played saxophone. I had an incredible, a music teacher who became a principal and he had us playing uh, he had us playing big band music jazz way back when I was an alto saxophone player I was a pi classical piano player and then I still like to sing in my shower and so I applied when I wanted to go to university I didn't know what I could do but I was like I think I can sing enough and I can play enough and I can read music so I'll go to I'll go into music school which I did and uh 
when I got there, I realized that while I was decent, I didn't have a gift the way mm-hmm. other people did. You know, I was also fortunate to be a part of the Fresh Arts program. Shout out to oh, the Fresh Arts. Pearl, uh, uh, definitely also have to have Girl, uh, Billy and Allen Foundation, all of these incredible community initiatives. But the the transition between music and journalism school happened when I realized that I wanted to tell the stories of what was happening with Black music in Canada. That was really the heart of it. Um, back then, it was called urban music. music yeah. Who remembers urban music? You know what I'm talking about. Listen, I was uh, part of the Urban Music Association of Canada. I sat on that board. That's right. So shout out to Aisha Wickham. Yep. Uh, big hugs to her, Toa Beer, all of those folks. Uh, but when I was there, I realized that we needed to document our own stories. Yes. We needed to make sure that people didn't forget what it took to get then flow 93.5. Come on now. What college and co- college and university radio meant, you know, CHIY, yeah. you know, all of this. Yeah, you Yeah. All of them. What it was like to be a part of that era and what music and culture was like pre Drake, pre the weekend, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. And so that's what got me into journalism school. I literally wanted to interview and I still have printouts from my old print, you know, computer. Remember with the little dots on the line? Yes, yes, yes. But I still have my old papers where I was writing about what it meant to be a woman in hip hop, what it meant to grow the black music scene in Canada, articles about race relations. Back then interviewing people like Dudley Laws and uh, interviewing people like uh, Karen, oh my gosh, Karen Glenn, like just people, people who were the foundation, Rascals, Kanan, Saul Guy, Jules Oh my, Jules God. Guy. Oh my God, Cardi. Oh my yes. God, Cardi, Cardi, he just had his 25th anniversary. One of my first cover stories, Director X, all of that. And that's what led me to journalism. You imagine he went from Little X to Director X. That's Come right, on. that's right. And we're when aging I- ourselves today, Em, we're aging <laughs> ourselves today. <laughs> and when I got to journalism school, the assignment seemed even more important because I didn't really see anybody like me. There mm. were so few young black people in journalism school. It was a funnel, right? You, 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 you eliminate certain people yeah. by yeah. the way that things, and I, I actually still have my journalism school application. And in it, I talked about being this young up and coming freelance journalist and why I wanted to go to journalism school. I'll never forget going to the Junos, thanks to cybercrib.com, which used to be a website um, that really documented a lot of hip hop and R&B. And I remember walking into the Junos. You have to remember, this is like way, for me, this is like 20 years ago, okay? With my little backpack, my sneakers, and I'm walking into the Juno Awards back then and stepping into a room where people are like, you're young, you're black, you're female, and you think you can tell stories at the same level as these other journalists? Yeah. Go yeah. to journalism school and earn their yeah. stripes? And I was like, watch me. Watch me. <laughs> and and they've, been say, they've been saying that ever since. Watch me. Because you know what? You tell such phenomenal stories. Um, I, I feel like I need to bring you on as a co-host for the, um, or maybe we just have to produce your own show. To, no. to interview these musicians, you know, because, you know, what I want to tell the story of the artists, like you had on Keisha Wint, and I see the Black Canadian Coalition of Artists have started really promoting the voices of artists. And, you know, you know, one of the things they've been doing, I'm not sure if you caught it yet, on Instagram every week, they're doing interviews with different artists. And Mishi Me just dropped something the other day. So it's it's really interesting what's what's going on with, with artists out there. Much respect to Mishimi. I was I, I said her name this today to somebody else. I owe her a call. And also just this is not about this conversation is not about me in any way. This is, I hope, this conversation will be sprinkled with the names of people who have made history in our city, in our lives, in our community, because they are the inspiration for all of us. Shout yeah. out to Denise Jones. Yes. Shout out to Salome Bay. Yes. Shout out to all of those people who, whether we know them personally or not, Jackie Richardson, Joe Seely, 
Like these are the people these who the, before people. we, yeah. even if we've never met them, they're elders that we need to hold up. And even if they don't know who I am, I know who they are and, and what they let them know they're loved. And give them their flowers now, not when they're now. Ready. Now. And so whatever platform I have, whenever I have it, Dr. Vibe knows this, we had a conversation. I really try to make sure to honor to name, to thank, to give the flowers to those who came before, because I'm very aware. Even the journalists, shout yeah. out to CABJ, Hamlin Drake Grange, Cynthia Reyes. My goodness, there's so many people who, who are well, about it. Yeah. They laid the foundation for us to even be here. There would be no How She Hustles. There would be no Startup and Slay. There would be no Her Story in Black without people like Ron Fanfare. Oh, drilling. Oh, no. I'm still going. And he's still going and telling really great stories. And you know what? If I'm going to say two things. If you're listening live and on the replay and you know some great people, drop it in the comments. People, names of people that we should be giving honor to and showing their flowers and giving them their flowers. People that we should even bring on to the show. They may already be on my list. But you know what? We need to give them their flowers and appreciation. And I can't even imagine, Emily, back in those days, for the job that you had in media. Like, what was it like? Being, as you said, you know, you went to the Junos, they're kind of looking at you side face. Um, and you, you now you're in CBC and you're in CTV. What was that like? Shout out, Carly you, Nation and Marcy. Because you know, you're looking, you still look 16, right? So I can imagine back then it was, he was looking like you were 12 years old. Well, so. well thank you. I'm trying. Yes. But I have to start out by shouting out Carly Nation yes. and Marcy Ian. Mm. It doesn't matter where necessarily people ended up now yes. because the seeds have already been planting planted and they are blooming and i am one of those people because of them i am here carly nation hired me and i remember working so hard to make her proud mm. Because I knew that there were so few of us in there that there was no room for error. There, you know, when you are one of the few or one of the only, and especially when you are young and you are black and you're female on top of that, and you don't necessarily come from the land of privilege. Yes. You have to make sure you are on your P's and Q's. And so, man, Carleen, I have to say, Carleen didn't even hire me at first. The competition was so stiff for the position she had at CTV to work with her as an assistant diversity producer. I believe it was 600 applicants What for one job and I didn't get the job. I'm telling you, I went to hear her. I snuck into a lecture she gave at Ryerson, okay? Creative. I interviewed about five people who knew her and really? knew what it was like to work with her. So I made my reference letters, my portfolio, like I did everything and I still didn't get the job, but I didn't give up and I continued to volunteer. Shout out University. I don't know if you remember University, yes, University Summit. Yes. conference. <laughs> and it was probably about six months after she hired someone else that I was volunteering on the PR team. And she saw me and she was like, you're not going to believe this, but the person we hired didn't work out. Do you want to apply for the job again? And I did. I got it. And it was spectacular. So shout out to her. Um, and also to Marcy Ian, who, yes. when I got there, you asked me, what was it like? It was tough. And I think it was tough because I knew that anybody who might come after me, mm -hmm. whatever I did was going to color, shade, mm -hmm. shape, how they were viewed. And so I had to do my best to always come with value, always come with stories, always come with something that was going to enrich the workplace. At the same time, trying to make room for myself so that if in the eyes of others, oh, it's just the black girl who does diversity. It was yeah. like, nah, I'm coming and I'm bringing you stories that are going to be excellent regardless of what community they're about. And they are going to build bridges and build brand equity and build relationship and build buzz 
and build long-term benefits for your media organization. And whether it was CBC, CTV, Chorus, anywhere else, that's what I've tried to continue to do. But it's tough. Um, I give so much love, respect to anybody do it, creating media content um, in this country. It is a difficult job to tell the stories of us. And March, March says it well, uh, the pressure was on. Yeah, and, and it's still on, it's still yeah. on. To all those black journalists out there, it's mm -hmm. still on. Um, much respect to everybody who is continuing to do that work. Because you know what I what I recognize, and if we were to if I were to think about what we were talking about earlier, when we're talking about race, and now we're talking about being in those spaces where sometimes you're the first, um, you're not only having to do the job. Like when I think about Carlene, you're not just doing the job for you in excellence, but your performance is going to affect the performance <laughs> if they're going to hire someone else. Like, right. what advice would you have for like even just like. It doesn't matter who, whether it's a journalist, a musician, what advice as you think about it, when you have to go into those those places and you know that you gotta you just gotta come different. You gotta come, or you're not even just different because we're already different. You gotta come higher and harder. <laughs> and still maintain sanity. I think one of the things I'm learning now as I'm getting more comfortable in my skin is don't shrink. Mm. I think when I was young, it took me a while to figure out my voice, my value, what I could bring to a space. But now when I walk into rooms of influence, uh, rooms where I often don't see myself reflective, if I want to wear my Ankara dress with my full Nigerian or Ghanaian fabric, I'll wear it. If I want to wear my twists, I'll wear it. If I want to speak about certain aspects of my life and my culture that others can't relate to, that's completely fine. And it took me a while to get to that space. Uh, I think a lot of us, as we journey, we may not always be ready to bring our full selves, but I think if there is any time, the time is now. This isn't the time to try and contort yourselves in place of influence. It's the time to bring it. What gives you that confidence, that boldness? That's one of the things I admire about you. You have this boldness that I don't even know how much people realize how much, how bold you've had to be, how courageous you, because you've had to go into some spaces. You're dealing with corporate people at every level. I even think about her story in black and the fact that it even got that to the place where it became a documentary and it came to the place where it was on CBC. Like if you guys have not seen the piece on her story in black, you need to go to Emily Mills, um, her YouTube page, and you need to go watch some videos because you need to understand what we're talking about. Her story in black just slayed it. Thank you. You know, it's, it's, it's not about me. I was thinking about walking into some of these spaces and was there a time, when was a time where I walked in and I thought, oh, I really feel like an imposter. Mm. And it's funny, in the moment I thought I was gonna feel the most unsure of myself, I feel like the ancestors came right in. And you and Miss Joan were right there. It was when we had that round table with the prime minister. Right. You remember, there was so much yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah. But it's amazing, when we sat down, like you guys remember, you know, put some context to this story and the story isn't a it's not about me it's about yeah. the moment the history the foundation here i am the daughter the granddaughter mm. of a humble jamaican man whose parents were from jamaica and came to work in the fields from india okay so this is my grandfather now part Indian, part Jamaican. Um, he didn't even finish grade school, okay? Has this beautiful family. My mom comes to Canada, working in the healthcare system as a nurse, nurse caring, serving for others, builds a life, has a little black family way back when, 
gets us into the best schools they could, gives us the best education they could, gives us a sense of self the best they could. And all of that work and sacrifice from the fields to the hospitals to the classroom landed me in a place where I got to sit down right beside the political head, the prime minister of a country that has what, 40 million people? to lead a conversation about black women, economic opportunities, entrepreneurship, what's not working, what policies are tripping us up in a boardroom <laughs> named after a black woman. Yes. In a facility that is dedicated to supporting racialized people, surrounded by a group of diverse young amazing and all ages, black women speaking their truth. In that moment, with that history, there was no room for me to shrink. Right. Because in that moment, I thought your ancestors, your grandfather, your mother, your great grandparents, they gave up too much. Don't waste this moment. Don't let your insecurities rob you of a moment to do what you are destined to do. 40 million Canadians are in this country. And to my knowledge, there has not been a round table in Canada's history with this prime minister, I'll check others, but at least for this prime minister, who's had more than one term, exclusively with black women talking about money, business and economics. It hasn't happened. We made history that day, not me, we. Yeah. So you ask for the advice? It is you have to see the moment and allow yourself to understand it's not about you. And thanks to people like you and Joan Pierre and so many others, you continue to remind me to drink the humble juice and to rest on the shoulders of the ancestors and to understand this is vessel work. This isn't me. There are so many more legacies that are at play here than just my personal story. You said so much in that, Emily, the assignment committed to service because it wasn't, it's not about you. And I think, you know, when, when, I, when I sit and I listen, and if anybody missed it, whether you're on the live or the replay, the answer that I, to that question is when you take yourself out of it, and when you understand the intention, because you have to understand your intention by behind what you're doing. And your intention was pure. Your intention wasn't about you. And the universe has kept, and the world has kept making room for you because you started this with what, 40 women, how she hustles. And now you're sitting down with the Prime Minister of Canada. You put the context of you talking to your grandmother in Antigua, he's 95 years old. You talk about your grandfather. When you sit in that moment, I'm like, Ashe, I'm like, I am so sobered in, in this moment. Um, I'm going to read you some of the comments. We have to give 110% always to be able to leave the lasting impression that it's hard for them to forget or find an excuse to ignore us in the future. Mm -hmm. Sarah tuned in from Ottawa. Hey. Don't waste those moments. Insecurities and fear cannot be allowed to ruin the opportunity and history. And she also added, this is vessel work. Yes. It is. And I it think is. that 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 to me is one of the most poignant things you said. This is vessel work. And when you realize that you're the vessel carrying it, the imposter syndrome can come in because you see yourself as a vessel carrying the water, carrying the food carrying all the fruit from the ancestors that have, and the fruit is not the literal fruit. The fruit is what they did, the fruit of their labor, the fruit of, of them thinking forward. I mean, like Emily, you're, as I said, you're super kind of Oh, thank you. And it's so great to see so many amazing, boy, I can't wait for your conversation with Sarah on Yango. Did I, did I miss it yet? No, you haven't missed it yet. I've been oh. trying to get Sarah, so I'm glad that you called it out. Sarah, oh, check okay. it out. I've been trying. Oh, right. I've, been trying. I've been trying. I've been trying. I, I, I also want to say, though, with humility that, you know, it's not like I don't have moments of fear. Yeah. I think so often when we see people, we look at their Instagram feeds, we see them with awards, people just think, mm -hmm. you know, you're fearless. I was on a podcast just a couple days ago, and it was like a fearless founders podcaster. You know, and I'm like, I'm not fearless at all. That is 
completely inaccurate. I yeah. feel moments of fear all the time. But in those moments of fear, that's where faith comes in. Yeah. And in those moments when if I don't have the words to ask God for the strength, that's when I lean on the people who do, who know how to say, let me pray for you. Let me cover you. Let me send you good energy. Let me remind you that this is much bigger than you. And that if you don't feel you have it in yourself, other energy will carry you. So. Bless, bless things that go on. <laughs> I, I think, um, as, as I settle and I think here, I just want to play something. Um, cause you know, it's, it's international women's, uh, week and month. And in 2019, something really special happened. So let's see if Nicole can work some magic here. Uh -huh. I don't know. One, two, three tech. One, two, three tech. Here yeah, we right. go. So tonight there's many things happening. It's a multifaceted night. It's a night where we as women celebrate each other. That as we stand here as strong, confident women, many of us are also battling through all kinds of things. And so don't let the lip gloss and the heels fool you. We need this space. This isn't a luxury, this is a necessity. In order to succeed, we have to be there for one another. Our struggle is real and it's every day. And if we can't support one another, who's gonna support us? Because this ain't your average get together. No, this ain't your average inner sister circle. No, this, this is. You better tell them. I tell you, Emily, oh! this is how she has <laughs> Shout out to everyone who put that together, especially Artist Touch Productions. I would be remiss if I didn't thank all of the incredible diverse women who have helped to make how she hustles what it is. And this isn't just about telling their stories, but also creating an environment where people feel comfortable sharing and opening up. Oh, hello, Syria. Hi, good to see you. You know, it, it's not just about, okay, we're going to host an event for women. One of the things that is so critically important to me is that women get valued for the work that they create. Whether that means you are the caterer who makes a beautiful dessert, whether that means you are the videographers like Terry and Leslie who made that video, whether you are the person working at the front to greet people at our events, whether you are the social media person, like long before we were having all of these discussions about equity and diversity mm -hmm. on this scale, I saw such a huge gap. And that's why it was critical and continues to be important for how she hustles to almost exclusively work with diverse women people of color, indigenous folks, so that we get paid for the work. So when we get sponsorship support, when somebody says, yeah, you're hosting a networking event. Yeah. Yes, you're putting out a digital series. Great, we wanna support you, wonderful. Yes, you can provide in-kind support, but I'd also like you to make sure that check has some good zeros. Come on now. So that- You gotta get paid, your team's gotta get paid. So that we can hire. Yes, and not volunteer all the time. So we can hire folks who we know have often faced systemic barriers to opportunity. I, I will tell you very briefly, I'll bring back up. When I was speaking to the Toronto Star, I was so humbled. Shout out to Fenella from FKB, FKB Media. He's on next week Monday. Tonight. He's on next week Monday. All right. So when Fenella was able to pitch, successfully pitch a story about how she hustles to the Toronto Star, and we were so surprised and blessed to be featured on the cover of the business section. I said to them, do you know that out of all the events that we've hosted over 10 years, okay, 10 years of events, year after year after year, quarter after quarter, all these events up to you know, 250, 400, 300, each event, I have yet to go to a venue where the caterer of record is a black woman. Come on now in the city of Toronto in 2021. Now these are businesses that automatically get your 
catering order, thousands of dollars because they're affiliated with an institution and they don't even have to give you a taste test. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. they automatically get business. And so I said, if you want how she hustles to come to your establishment, here's the deal. I'm bringing my own team. Yes. From the AV technician to the caterer to the security. We've had sisters in locks doing security. Yeah, you want my business? That's who you're going to send because we are not having microaggressions here. Not when we're bringing this crew together. You want somebody to run the sound boards? I know people, women of color, who can absolutely run your sound. Ask yep. them any questions about tech. They yep. can handle it. So why is it that we don't have these opportunities in a systemic way? And that is some of the work that inspires me. The people who keep pushing the envelope in that way and keep doing excellent work so that when the opportunities come, it's like, just watch them. Yeah. And I think that's, that is one of the greatest things I admire about you, Emily, from the time getting to, you know, volunteer with you, becoming your friend is that you always make it a mandate that you bring the crew and you want the crew to be paid. Even, even if people say, no, I'm going to volunteer, you find a way. And, and I say that you've always found a way to show appreciation to all, to even those who say, listen, no, Emily. And we've come many times and said, nope, 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 nope. We're not taking a dime because we see the value of what you're doing. And when you bring value to the table um, and then you make sure that those around see value, that has been, I think, one of the things that have totally set you apart from every, for, from a lot of people. And you're the real deal. And and um, I, I know you don't like the compliments you know, out loud sometimes, but I'll say that's one of the things that when Joan and I first came to the table, and Joan can back me up here, I know she'll put it in the comments, <laughs> is that Emily is the real deal. Oh, you. Who you see, who you hear is what you get. And you don't have to worry about what is the ulterior motive. And everybody has a motive. It could be a good motive. And, and that's the thing. People are afraid of saying, you know, they have an intention. They have something that they want. It could be just a feel good moment. Now, having a motive is not always a negative thing, but it's knowing what that motive is, knowing what you want to get, you know, and, and you have this beautiful discernment. Now, when we talk about and think about International Women's Week, the month, what what is one of the messages you would have for women who are sitting like you and, and sitting there just trying to contemplate? You can speak to the mom, you can speak to the entrepreneur, you can speak to any one of the women that you want to speak to, but what, what would you, what would it be? Two things. And while I'm at it, I just want to shout out, I see a Doma Patterson. My goodness, there's so many, Mary, Mary Clark Walker. Like these are people who I'm just like, woo, I see you, I celebrate you, you inspire me. Thank you for taking time to be here. Um, okay, so two messages. Take the, take the compliment. She is the real deal always, no <laughs> surprises. I'm learning, I'm taking notes from authentic veterans, always, always, always. So, okay, so what are two two messages? Number one, know your value and even if you don't know it assume it is more than you've assigned to yourself Woo! so uh, i'm still working on it right so often people will offer and it, it's for different reasons but so often people will offer you something or give you something and you have to decide is this for me now Sorry, I'm gonna adjust my shirt here, it's bothering me. There we go. Is this the value that I feel is right for me? And sometimes it's monetary value, sometimes it's a different kind of value that has no dollars attached to it. And so we have to figure out, what am I worth? And it could be, I am worth being treated better. I am worth being paid better. It could be worth, it could be, I am worth having a seat at the table. I am worth building my own table. Whatever it is, I think this is the season where we need to, especially as black women and women of color, and those are two related, yeah. but also yeah. not the same group. I also wanna make that distinction. But I do think that there are similarities that often the pecking order means that our worth is devalued. Mm -hmm. And so I would say now more than ever, I'll tell you a story. 
without calling names last year, I had to stare down two situations that were very real. And in those moments, you have to think, I've got a young family, I'm an entrepreneur, it's a pandemic. Mm -hmm. We were coming up on our 10 year anniversary and I was in some sponsorship discussions and I had two brands in front of me that wanted to work with us. Mm -hmm. And I had to just sit and try and find that voice of discernment and really pray and you know. And when it came down to it, I think, what am I worth? This moment, but in the long run, mm -hmm. what do you want the sum of your journey to say to the world? And that's not necessarily about how much money you're paid. That's about what is your worth in terms of your values? What is the worth of your alignment with certain people, your alignment with certain brands, the company you keep? What does that say about your worth, what you represent? And so, boy, even though the numbers were there and the zeros were there, I was like, and no. And in those, in those two instances, the only thing I had to fall back on is I am going to trust that whatever I need will be provided. Mm. There was no plan B. I just knew the plan A didn't feel right. Right. And so I keep... I think that is a critical message right now, especially as the theme of International Women's Day is choose to challenge. Yeah, yeah. Choose to challenge that you're worth more. And so many of us are choosing to just be like, yeah, I'll take whatever's being offered because everybody's coming and offering everything under the sun in the time where black women especially are so appealing. But is it enough? The second thing I would say is it is okay to pause. And boy, am I hey. learning this oh, The boy. power in the pause. The power the in the pause. The power in the pause. My goodness. In this day and age when we are so conditioned to be on all the time, I never would have imagined that I could have taken almost three months off social media. Me, Miss How She Hustles. That was I'm phenomenal. Put the phone down. That, that was phenomenal. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm going to put my phone down and I am not going to check it 20 times a day. And oh, I'm not going to post something on Instagram. Guess what? Anybody watching? <laughs> the world is still going to revolve. People are still going to get up and breathe if they don't see your Instagram post or tweet. And I think we need to give ourselves permission, especially those of us who are caregivers to elders, who are the glue for families in crisis right now, for those of us who are 25-8 entrepreneurs, parents, educators, community champions and leaders, etc. We need to give ourselves permission to pause. This is long game. I want to be... I want that 40 years from now, we can still have this conversation like you had with Dr. Augustine. Yeah. And I still yeah. feel fired up and like the work isn't done and I still feel energized. But if so many of us just blow it out of the water, mm -hmm. we may not last another four decades. So we have to give ourselves some grace. And I thank friends like you, friends like Joan, Liza, Marla, Amanda, so Mediza, yeah, so many people mm -hmm. for reminding me of that lesson. So with humility, I share it with anybody else who needs to hear it. The power of the pause. I, I just love it. And you know, so what do you do for self-care? Woo! I am loving self-care right now. You don't even need to talk to me. Okay. I just went uh, off camera. I just like kind of just forgot myself. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, first and foremost, my kids, they... They are self-care. They're a lot of work, but in so many ways, they're mm -hmm. so much joy. I am laughing, living, exploring, rediscovering mm -hmm. through my children. And laughter is one of the best medicines. Sure is. Oh my goodness. So uh, exploring with my kids. Last week, we were making snow volcanoes in the backyard. We were baking, uh, we've been making forts, 
We've been learning black history. Boy, I, I was watching Miss Lou and we, we were singing in Patois. It was fantastic. Um, another thing that I love to do, shout out to Mediza, reconnecting with people who matter. Yes, that's it was important. Great. Thanks to her first online watercolor painting lesson. It was fantastic. Just art and creativity and creating things, whether that's painting, whether that's doing your own hair, whether that is knitting, whether that is drawing, dancing, all of that. Music and art is such a big part of my life. Uh, reading, my goodness, I've been just loving the books. What are, what are you reading? What are you reading? Okay, so, okay, I have three. What's on your shelf? What's on your shelf? I have, okay, so three. Okay, so first, if you don't own this book, Please do yourself a favor. A different book list. Shout out to Aita Sadu and Uncle Miguel. Yes. yes. Um, get your copy of Selena's book. Um, Marcy Ian's book I just read. I'm waiting on Trey Anthony's book. Yes. I got that one. I got that one. Must reads. Must reads. Must reads. So reading is huge. Journaling. Can I show off? Can I show off, can I show off a new for a minute today? Oh. <laughs> An international woman's, well, not the day, but the start of the week. This came in the mail. I don't know if you can Ooh! see. Tyson. Tyson. Okay, so can you can you be careful? Be kind to that book so you can then pass it on. No, you need your own. Okay, fine. Yes, I, I support you. support black businesses. I will and, and, and author. It's not just about that. I think you need your own because <laughs> the title is just as I am. And with her book, listen. Do you know what I did with this book today? I pretended that Miss Cicely, Cicely Tyson was right there, and I inscribed a book, and I I wrote. I, I, I signed the book, okay? I signed the book myself. Beautiful. That's what you have to do. No, honestly, reading has been good. Journaling has been good. But I would also say nature. Nature, mm. on a serious tip, nature has really been a gift. So many of us feel like we are prisoners in our own home. But that 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 mentality had to stop really quickly for yeah. me. Um, whether it is going outside in your backyard and making snow angels or mm -hmm. snowmen or having a backyard barbecue in the winter. Yes, we can do that too. Going for a nature walk in the yeah, snow yeah. and ravine, tobogganing, which I've done multiple times. Adults, yes, you we should You are such that. a winter baby. You're <laughs> such a winter baby, my goodness. We need to do that. We need to recognize that, yes, many of us maybe weren't born in this country or if we were, maybe winter isn't our favorite. I personally love it, but I think we have to remember that the sun, the blue skies, the snow, the leaves, the grass, the streams, all of it is meant to connect us and meant to remind us that we're alive, that we're alive. Things that grow, things that move, things that evolve are meant to remind us that that's who we also are as human beings. You know, that was a really good, you know, I didn't, I don't even have to ask the question because when it, it's so fitting for Black Mental Health Week, you know, last year it started as a day. Mm -hmm. And this year, the mayor of Toronto said, uh, yeah, it's a week. And it's, and it's funny, there was a joke on one of the chat lines today. It was like, um, when we didn't know it was expanded to the week, the running joke was, uh, so who's taking the day off today? Could you imagine? <laughs> If all a black Toronto took the day off today, what I wonder what the what, what would what what would actually be working if all of Black Toronto took the day off? Well, today? yes, and I told you I would be dropping names today. Um, so also shout out to Jan Campbell who used to organize Black Women's Day Off. Oh my uh, gosh! Yes, yeah. Black Women's Leadership Network. So many of us think that we have to have these big fancy ways to relax yeah. and unwind, but you don't, you really don't. If that means that all you're gonna do today is have a cup of tea and sit for 20 minutes. I was listening to NP music, as I said, is a big part of my life. I was listening to NPR Tiny Desk concert <laughs> with Kirk Franklin. It came out four days ago, D'Angelo concert, like even this versus Barris Hammond, like yeah. all of that. Barris Hammond concert? Oh my goodness. Okay. It's Right. So, you know, this is not just social media noise. Yeah. Art is healing. It is. Art is healing. And this it heals is the why. brain. It heals the brain. Literally heals it the does. brain. It does. This is why when you think about all of the precious milestones of our lives, usually art is involved when people get married, when people transition, when people have birthdays. 
tap into the arts, whatever that looks like for you, because I think that that is a huge way for us to maintain our mental health at a time when we are just so taxed. I, I just want to take a, a moment to just say, you know, for those tuning in now, we're at the top of the next hour. This is part two of the <laughs> conversation of Emily Mills from How She Hustles. And she's more than just How She Hustles. Most people know her from there. Uh, that's why I say it. I know she really doesn't need to pump it up, but I'll pump it up because How She Hustles has has brought women together from all over the world. And so if you're joining live and on the replay, I want to thank you. I want to thank those new listeners who've just joined in the conversation and, com and oh, commenting. Yes. I see a beauty right here that you're going to love. Miss Rami Verapan. Oh, oh my goodness, God. I nearly choked on her. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, love. Okay, so big shout out to Rami and Surya. Um, so much love. And again, this is, it's amazing how this time has separated us, but has brought us together. And the power of technology allows us to just give virtual flowers to yes, the people yes, who deserve yes. it, like Miss Rami. So hello to you. And I'm, and I'm so grateful for everybody tuning in um, live and on the replay. Emily, um, tell me something. You know, you've done all these, these different events and we'll, we'll play the, we're going to play another video later. <laughs> but um, you've met so many people. Who inspires you, beloved? Who inspires you? And I know it's just probably not going to be one person, but who or what inspires you outside of the children? <laughs> you know... Um... It's the people who walk with me in spirit right now. I think of people like um, Kike Lola. Yes. Hoden Nelaye. Yes. Um, my Nicole dear friend Clark. Nicole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my dear friend Nicole. Marcia Ramiki. Oh my goodness. It's just, there have been some women Many of them I've never even met. Some of them we talked about before, like um, Denise Jones and Salome yes. Bay. Like they're just so many inspirations. And I think that is what, when people aren't even physically here and they're still inspiring you. Yes. That's when you know you've had a life well lived. And I think that's what we should all aspire. We should all aspire to that, you know, aim to be the person who it's not about the awards on your shelf or the headlines you make or the famous people you meet. It's are you going to leave an impression on somebody's life that even when you are no longer physically here, in moments when they doubt, in moments when they're celebrating, mm -hmm. in moments when they are fighting their greatest battles, their hearts turn to you to be reminded that you're capable. And those are some of the people that inspire me. And for those of you who are listening, you know, Emily called out a bunch of young women that have transitioned. We have, we had some elders on that list, like Salome Bay and, and Denise Jones, um, and probably didn't get enough flowers when they were here. But when I think of Nicole Kike, when I think of, um, Dan, they were young women in the prime of what we would say the prime of their lives. And, um, and they're no longer here with us. And so it's to live life now in the knowing, giving people their flowers, standing in the truth of who you are, walking in your service. And when you think on that, and when I think about it, what would you say to your younger self? Mm. Every step is ordered. Mm. Even if you don't know where you're going now, keep moving and your destination will become clearer. I told y'all to walk with some pen and paper <laughs> and make sure and write it down. I'm going to have to listen to the no. show now to have to go write down all these quotes that Emily's saying, these nuggets. No, really, because like they're my life, you know, it, listen, I have been very fortunate to be raised by two incredible parents, a village, many supporters, mentors. I've been very blessed to be touched by some incredible people, but my life has not been without its adversity. Mm -hmm. 
Nobody's life is, right? And I would never take the shiny moments away and I would never take the hard ones away either because they've helped to give me a deeper sense of appreciation when things work out. They've helped to give me a deeper sense of purpose, a deeper sense of vision, a deeper sense of intention. Mm -hmm. And they've helped me to appreciate the work that it's taken to get me here. And now that I'm a parent, I have an even deeper appreciation for the people who got me here because now I have to be intentional about helping my sons to get where they need to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would say, take every step, even the ones that feel like you're stepping into stuff you don't want to step into, but it's meant. The imposter syndrome moments, the tears, mm -hmm. the, the co internal conflict, the God, I don't know what's around that door, but I'm going to walk through it anyway. All of that becomes the blueprint of a life worth living. So at this very moment in time, I can honestly look myself in the face and say, I have very few regrets. I love that. I, I love that. And I hope people can really take away, take away from that moment of what you just said. Um, just, just for, just for fun sake, just, just, just for fun sake. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun fact about Emily Mills. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back into something deep. But what's a fun fact about Emily Mills that people really don't know besides the fact that you play the saxophone, you like to dance, you like to sing, you make snow angels, um, you toboggan, and you know, for black folks, some most black folks don't like the snow, but you like the snow. So if you don't know how to like the snow, call Emily. She'll teach you. A fun fact about me. Oh, uh, I might have to come back to that one. I, oh, I know. Okay. I have one. I never really got into movies until later in life, but I was in a movie pretty early in life. What? I was actually an extra in a movie with Dave Chappelle. The movie was called Half Baked. If you watch the movie, you will see there is a scene where Dave Chappelle takes his date to an ice cream parlor. The ice cream parlor is Toronto's Dutch Dreams. Dutch Dreams. Oh my God, I missed One that. of my first jobs was at Dutch Dreams. So you will see me in the background making ice cream. I am wearing a full Dutch outfit with including wood clogs. I had my hair in pigtails. I was wearing the white hat and everything. That, that was my movie debut. So, yeah. <laughs> that was a cool fun fact. I didn't know that. And you know what? This is why you have to have conversations with your friends and find yeah. the questions that you never, you know, really ask. I never even thought to ask you that. And I just thought about it. There we go. Oh, so, okay. Here's another one. Um, do you ever think you're misunderstood? What do the people misunderstand about you? I know one of the things I misunderstood mm -hmm. about you, but... What's that? Tell, tell me your answer first, because I'm curious. What, what do you think people misunderstand about me? When, when I first met you and I saw this woman going about her business and she was like, you know, the Emily face, you know. I have face? Yeah, you do. <laughs> I never knew how funny you were. Thank I, you. I never knew how funny you were. And I never knew how much you like music. Like music to you is like breathing. And like that was like, when you see Emily at the end of the thing and the music start playing, the bubble start coming, I was like, okay, who's this? Who's this? She's yes. here. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes, you got it. You got it. I do like to laugh. People, and this is it, right? People will decide mm -hmm. what they're going to see in you. You can offer up whatever you want to the world, um, but as much as you brand yourself, brand yourself, brand yourself, people will still come with their ideas of who you are. Yes, I can be very serious and about my business, but I am a, I'm a very silly person, if you know me very well. Um, I like to clown, definitely clown around. I like to dress up. Um, like Halloween, I'm all about it. I love to dress up or any costume party, like anything like that. A little bit of pranking. You know, I just like, I like to laugh for sure. Um, but I think one of the misconceptions that people have is that the brand is everything. Yeah. I think the people who really know me will understand that 
if I had to choose between knowing you, Nicole, for example, as Nicole, the podcaster or the event planner or the, the business person versus Nicole, the person, the human, the heart, I would want to know your heart every time. Amen. Every time. I think so often when people have brands, yes. you know, or a name or a hashtag or achieve what is perceived as a certain level of success, sometimes people assume that that's what they wanted and they were just being very crafty about it and disguising their true intention. Mm. But I, there is no smoke and mirrors here. I didn't start How She Hustles 10 years ago with a business plan saying, one day I want to meet Michelle Obama and one day I want to sit down beside the prime minister. That wasn't the intention. The intention was to hold space. Mm. And that's still the intention. And success is nothing to me without integrity, without good people, and without humility. If those three things are not there, intention, integrity, and humility, then what is success? What is success without the people who matter? It's nothing. Um, so I think so often people will see an image of what they think, how she hustles, or even myself, what I'm about, if, if, if they don't know me personally. And it's important to me that I always hold on to, I know who I am. Yeah. And I know that people and good people matter more to me than anything. You know, you said so many things there, Emily. My brain is like, okay, which where, where are we going next? Where are we going next? Where are we going next? Lord Jesus. But you know, twice you've mentioned the you know, the heart, the people, why you do things. And I think about the friendship. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think about what would you want to be known for? So what does friendship really mean to you? What, what is friendship? Is that important to you? Ooh, it is. You know, I'm, I'm a Pisces. We are um, a very creative, emotional sign. Sorry, no shade on the other, on the other, on the other astrological signs, but that, Listen, that's- Listen, I'm going to take a sip of water for that. <laughs> um, but I would say, you know, Friendship is so important to a sign like mine and to my personality. Loyalty is critical. You know, I, I really value and treasure my friends. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think friendship is about, friendship is not measured in duration. Exactly. You know? exactly. It's about connection. That's what it's about. Doesn't matter whether I met you five years ago or five days ago, if I feel the vibe and we connect, mm -hmm. that's what matters. And I think in the work of How She Hustles, not saying that you know every time we have 250 people, everybody's my friend, but it's about bringing that energy to the space where it's not about the business card, the resume, the LinkedIn profile, who do you know, what can you connect? It's about creating an environment where the energy has many of the qualities of a friendship where you can be yourself, where you can bring yourself, where you can say what you need to say, where there's an exchange of story, of energy, of truth. Yes. That's what it's about to me. And when I'm in a friendship with someone, it's like that on steroids in a good way. <laughs> you know, that that's so important. And people like Mediza, who's on here, you know, there are other people like, some of my girlfriends who I got together with over the holidays virtually. I mean, these are people that I've known for 25 years, 35 That's years. Friendship. My goodness. Like, and it doesn't mean we have to be besties in every single season because as you yeah. and I both know, relationships ebb and Change. flow. Yep. Right? They ebb and flow. Sometimes you're friends with people. Sometimes you're not as close. But I think the people who are meant to be with you through, whether it's just for a season or for a lifetime, mm -hmm. they'll appreciate the quality of the relationship, not necessarily the, the quantity. Come on now, you see, right. it's 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 the yeah the quality is is so key, and um, 
one beautiful woman here, Shirley Joseph, just said, love this interview and conversations like this to remind us all that you can't do this gifted privilege called life alone. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Shout out to you, Shirley Joseph. Is this the Shirley Joseph from Black, Black Content? Content Creators? Shout That's out to friend. you. Shout out to you. It's so, and I, I have to shout out to everyone on this live, uh, whether you're watching it live or the replay. Super honored that you chose to spend some of your precious time with us. And Nicole, thank you for having me again. Um, you know, I just want to shout out anybody on here who not only started something, but sustain something. And that's why I'm so inspired by you just even doing these lives. It's so easy to start. And even then, sometimes it's not even easy to start. Yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah. everybody start up this, start up that, start up yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Five years from now, 50 podcasts from now, five decades from now, after you've gone through five different experiences of adversity and crisis, are you still doing the thing that brings you joy and brings purpose to the world. That is when it is truly amazing. So I'm tipping my hat to everyone who is in there, continuing yeah. to put one foot in front of the other, saluting you. We all know it's not easy. And, and it's true. It's, it's not easy. And it's interesting. Cheryl, Shirley, um, myself, Tristan Barracks, and Carlina, we actually did a, a talk in Clubhouse the other day and um, about the black tax one of the things we touch on the black tax is when people perceive you to be all super successful and they don't they think you're you're off limits or they, they can't talk to you right now or they have this perception of of what they think you are and who they think you are uh ricardo mccray made a comment and said you know when he went on to the social and did an interview instead of his business rising, his business went down because people thought he was unapproachable. He was going to be too expensive. Oh, I can't afford her. Mm. You know, uh, people have said, you know, to like, I can't afford Joan Pierre. I can't afford Nicole. How can I approach Emily? And we're just human beings doing our things. And listen, I'm living in my, in my little co-op on the seventh floor, you know, doing this podcast with no sponsors yet, uh, yet. And I, I emphasize the word yet. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Name it and claim it. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, the series that I have in my head for this podcast and, and this, and I no longer call this part the podcast, you know, I, I felt it in my spirit. I had to change it to show. And, you know, people will sit down and watch a movie for two hours and three hours. And people say, you know, well, you need to make it an hour. I'm like, no, you can pause it and come back just like you pause it and come back to a movie because um, the people that I'm bringing to you, um, some part of it, I hope they inspire you um, to be the best you and you can learn from their stories or you can share their stories um, with somebody else. Like, you know, even as we talk about the friendship part and we talk about black mental health, we talk about race, we talk about women. One of the things that um, we are faced with as women and as black women, and I think it, it, it speaks to both and I don't know how you want to approach this, but we have this distrust of each other. We, we don't know how to hold space as women when we get into corporate and we're afraid to introduce this one to that one because, and then as black, when you add the black skin on top of it, or when the, when you add the, the woman of color on top of it, holy moly, Batman, how can I introduce you here? Because can I trust you with what? How have you had to deal with that black, that, that black woman trust or that woman trust thing? I'm still dealing with it. Mm. We all are. Uh, I don't want to pretend that it's all butterflies and fairies. There have certainly been seasons in my life, moments in my life, circumstances in my life where I thought, yeah, I don't know if that necessarily embodied sisterhood to me. Yeah, uh, I've had my share of hurt and disappointment, but I refuse to let that rob me mm -hmm. of the opportunity to build with other women. I refuse. And I, I will that. say, um, for the first eight years of How She Hustles, I couldn't think of not one major circumstance where that happened. Right. right. It was always just, just a completely different energy. Yeah. And I was yeah. so grateful for that. And I'm even grateful when other energy started to come. Yeah. Because, you know, a life that is lacking adversity it doesn't mean that it's a perfect life yeah, I think yeah. we need 
to have challenges so that we can really see what we're made of and what we stand yeah. for. Yeah. You know, you need to know what isn't for you and what is for you so that you can demonstrate whether you have discernment. If everything is always perfect all the time, you'll never know what values you hold clear. You'll never know what you're made of and what you want to make sure that you represent, right? Until you have to choose between I'll take this and I'll reject that. And so um, in my relationships with different women, it's been really important to show and wear my heart on my sleeve in many cases. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that's meant I've, I've gotten burned. Sure. Yeah. But I think for the most part, if you give out energy that says, actually, I am going to walk with good vibes and good energy. Yeah. yeah. And I know that this is not about me, but this is about doing work that is about us. Yes. Okay. Then let's walk together. Yeah. What I'm learning though, is that as my journey evolves, sometimes people think that if you are not public and vocal right. and put your support of them on the, your timeline, mm. that you are not, at their cheerleader. Yeah. And I think yeah. especially as black women, we need to stop doing that. Your support doesn't have to be an Instagram post. Come on now. But it's true, right? Yeah. Yep. There, there has to be a different way that we can show up for people and we need to give permission. We need to give other people permission, but also yeah. ourselves permission to show up in a way that feels authentic and appropriate. So sometimes people will message me and be like, oh my gosh, can you promote this on your feed? Can you do this? Can you do that? You may have no idea what's happening in my life right now. Come on now. You may have no idea what season I'm in. You may have no idea what conflict you've just created for me. And that may not be for you to know. That's for me to know. Exactly. But in a true trusting relationship, it's always, better to assume and trust that if somebody didn't do something that you hoped they did, you're going to believe the best in them, not the worst. Believe that there is a reason for that action and that the intention is good. So often we're quick to assume that that person doesn't support me. That person doesn't believe me. That person thinks they're better than me. Why? And many times I've had to just swallow that. Yes and still move in a way that I hope will benefit someone and they don't even know. And that's okay. Because as I've learned from my parents, my community, my mentors, my elders, my sponsors, support doesn't have to be loud. Hey. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. You can still move in a way that transforms somebody's life and they don't even have to know. And also, we don't always have to ask for thanks. You can do something because you know it's the right thing to do. There have been people who I would say in practice have pretty much spat in my face. Yeah. And when somebody comes and says, oh my gosh, this woman pretty much spat in your face. I have to make a choice in that moment. Am I gonna spit back or am I gonna say, nope, no, no, not in this season. This is not going to be the time that you're going to hear me. Yeah, me no, 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 no. Chop yeah. down. Another woman of color, another black woman who is fighting to open doors. She may not open the same door as me. She may not walk through the world as me. She may not have the same lived experience as I do. But guess what? If I have an opportunity to applaud her, to speak well of her work, to respect her hustle, if it's something that is of integrity, you don't have to be my best friend for me to clap for you. Emily Mills, I love you more and more every day. And I'm trying not to cry because it is so profound when we can stand in the truth of who we are. And as you know, you, that, that comment you made, and Sarah just put it out there exactly, <laughs> support doesn't have to be loud. That's and it's your intention. And you know, along the way you learn about intention and expectation. It took a lot for me. And I can I can I really identify with some of what you're saying, or all of what you're saying, in fact. Not even some, all of what you're saying. And it's when you put people on pedestals and when you expect something from someone that they're not capable of capable of giving you. We put our expectation expectations on people and then we get offended 
when they just be who they are, you know? And understanding that, that people do what they need to do for where they need to be. Yeah. And we have to just be able to honor them in their space, love them in their space. Sometimes we have to love them from a distance, allow people to grow. Um, and, and that's one of the things I admire about you. You do not... Like I could know the same person you know, and they could have done you. You will not even say Nicole, bam, bam, bam. You will hold that in, and people. And that's the funny thing: people may think that you're telling us, and even telling us, Jack, be nimble, be close to you, like like white on rice, and like you won't even know it was, you know, John Brown down the road or Jennifer Smith down here. Nope. And 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 you you just you just evolve you just move forward in it and that's one of the beauty of 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 why I love trust and honor and respect you. Thank you. But you know, to that point, I think because I've learned from other people and I'm still learning from women who are, and men who are wiser than I am that we need we all need space to evolve. I've made my own mistakes. I've had my own you know, leadership gaps, my own blind spots, my own moments where I needed to mature and grow and yeah. ask for forgiveness. And so we do ourselves a disservice when instead of supporting other women, we spread things that are so negative and damaging, damaging. Yeah. and never give them an opportunity to redeem themselves in a way that is authentic to them. Or, you know, I want somebody to experience me through me. Give me that opportunity. You know what I mean? As opposed to somebody saying, well, this person is like this or that person yeah. is like yeah. that. Because you haven't given me an opportunity to interact with you. Yeah. And also, I think, especially during this season, we need to extend a hand of grace to each other and ourselves. People are under such immense pressure we know this we're all walking it yes yeah. so at this point in time if somebody can't answer your text right now or can't show yes. up that zoom right now or can't yes. promote your stuff right now give them grace you're right you know people do not know like they see us out here they even see us doing this live they don't know what we did through today we, they don't know what some other people went through today. They don't know who's who had a debt. They don't know, you know, if they're dealing with illness in their family, uh, financial challenges. The the list is long, and we long. need to, to to give people grace. And you know, one of the things I say with friendship is, and when I think about Mental Health Week, when I think about women, we need to lift each other up in so many other ways. Like I don't need to tell you I'm having a hard day. You should be able to hear my voice and know I'm having a hard day, or or pick me up in the spirit. If you know that friendship. Um, if you know, and that's one of the things I love about my inner circle, my iron sharpeners, like you, Joan, you know, Medeza. It's so funny that Medina, Medeza is your friend and now she's, she's become part of my circle. And, and so that's when you start looking at the inner circles of people that you don't have to say you're having a hard day, whether they send you flowers, um, live flowers, or they send you the flowers, you know, picture, they send you a song or they know that, you know, financially things are stretched. It's COVID. And somebody just says, oh. I'm just sending you a gift card for groceries or they drop groceries to your door or here's a meal. Like I remember last year, like, be like, uh, Nicole, come downstairs. I'm like, what are you doing downstairs? You live in so I live in so, and you know, mask and, and five minutes later, there's a lasagna. And I'm like, you make the best lasagna ever. I'm mean, like, we need to do so much more of that for each other. And distance doesn't matter. No. You know, distance doesn't matter. People are talking about being zoomed out. I'm like, be zoomed in, you know, um, I remember one of our really special friends, and I'm going to call her out today, that one of our matriarchs, Rami, and you know, and I know you, you, we've celebrated her so much for her birthday, how we came together and we had a Zoom and we gave her, we gave her a Zoom surprise party. Like, you know, she thought it was going to be like three people and then, you know, the village showed up. That's yeah. what we got to do in our friendships and in our love for one another. And I, and I just, I'm so grateful for it. And yeah. look at Miss Mediza. Miss Mediza jumped into the conversation. <laughs> I love you, ladies. Best drive home ever. Yeah. And, and Mediza, Mediza, I can't wait for you to be able to do this full time. Like, I, I'm going to brag right now. I have great friends. Like, in Emily and Joan, my victory, you may not be able to see what it says. My victory speaks glass. Every time I do the show, the only glass I drink my water out of now is my victory speaks glass. 
they did some branding for me. <laughs> That's an A. Medina. Listen, I've got my my mug. This is one of them. Purpose, passion, hustle. Yes, and my pillow in the back. The in the back. Branding. You know, this this is it. And can, can we just talk about doing business and friendship hey, for a minute? Please. Can we just talk the things? Can we talk the things? Are listen, we okay? I, listen okay. I'm just saying. Um, I'm just saying. I'm just going to give people a warning. I don't know how long this conversation is going to be. I know. <laughs> We have no, we have no, we have nothing to worry about tonight. I can tell you, you can press pause, come back on the replay. Oh, but I'm talking with my girl Emily Mills. This is how we vibe, okay? And so this is really what an inspired conversation is about. So doing business and friendship. Go ahead. Okay. It's still an area that I'm learning so much about. But as I said before, it is the most important thing is not just that the work gets done but it's the lives that you touch and the relationships you build while the work gets done. Because the project is gonna get done, the event's gonna get done, the products is gonna go out. But at the end of the day, are you gonna be able to say, and we're still friends, mm. right? And we're still friends. I still trust you. Yes. I still love you. When your heart is hurt, I'll be there. In my moments of joy, I want you to still be there. We have to decide so often, especially as women, which lane are we going down? Are we going down the lane of this is just business? Don't come into my personal life. Are we going down the lane of yes, let's be together and mix business and pleasure. And it's a delicate dance. It takes so much trust and I'm still working through it. But I will say when it happens, like with people like Deza, like yourself, like Miss Joan, it is magical because we can't build our lives or our businesses without each other. We need mm -hmm. support, as Lady Diane said in that video. If we can't support each other, who will? We need yes. people to grow us, to show us where we need to develop, to show us how we need to evolve. And if we don't bring people into our circles of business and our personal lives, we cannot do it on our own. Of course, it takes discernment. Sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we're not right for each other. I'm not the right person to be in the inner circle of everyone. That's right. You can't be. I can't be and I shouldn't be. And so I'm also learning to not take it personal and to really be at peace with it when I can feel that maybe last year I was in your inner circle and maybe now I'm not. But you know what? When I believe as I do that everything is meant, when it's my time to move on, instead of being heartbroken, I have a heart of gratitude. And I just have to say, my time is done with you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey up to this point. And you let it go. And you know what? The saying always comes, a season, a reason, and a lifetime. And it's not just a saying, it's a truth. And it's, it's, it's where you're at and where that person's at and what you have to do. You yeah. know, um, I just want to give you some um, some little messages here. And Sarah, oh, oh yeah, oh. Cool. this has got to be one of the most inspiring and uplifting <laughs> conversations I've heard in a month in months. And oh. I'm telling you, this conversation, you. I'm enjoying it as much as you guys. I, I, you know, some of you may know about Clubhouse, some of you may not know about Clubhouse. I'm telling you, there are conversations happening on Clubhouse that are going three, four, five hours long. Wow. So I'm not even worried about time with people anymore. And, you know, um, and syndicates. And, you know, it's funny. I'm going to be Oprah today because Oprah oh, is she shifted in her chair. She's serious now. She's like, mm -hmm. yeah. so guess what? Um, Oprah is uh, just finished an interview with uh, the prince who is he's no longer carrying the prince type. Right. Yes, yes. And Gail, her best friend, said this was by far one of the best conversations she's had. So like. Sarah right now I'm trying not to cry and and what she also said was it's one of the longest conversations she's had mm. so maybe it's something about uh the season we're in maybe there's a shift in conversation maybe people just don't want to watch movies anymore and movies are good because we have good inspirational movies but there's also some stuff on tv that's happening I uh, one day I want to have that conversation about Canadian tv and what's happening to the black content anyway moving on that's going to be a conversation yes Joan Pierce says, the support I get the most joy from is when I did something for someone and they never knew where the hell came from. Yes. You can sit back and see the success. And I see both of you in that light. Okay, Joan, you're just going to make us cry. 
Oh Lord Jesus. See, have my box. Vivian <laughs> Costa, great great designer. When I was first working on the TV show that I was working on, that that you know people don't know I was working on a TV show and some things happened. But Vivian came and she volunteered and and Vivian, I need some clothes in my new show like right now. Okay, just hey, so put hey. your on. listen. Emily and Heidi had had this fun conversation before I go back to the comments that we said, listen, ladies. There are so many women in your circle. And I know some of y'all are spring cleaning, but Emily doing some shows, I doing some shows and things. When you're going through your closets, before you get to the Salvation Army, can you look to your inner circle of women? I'm just saying, let's keep it real. I remember we used to do swap parties where when we could come live and direct, we swapping purses, you have something in your closet that you know what, you just bought it in the moment. Think of your female friends, and, and I'm serious. Think yeah. of Emily and myself, but also think of the women in your circle. Who will this look nice on? Uh -huh. Who can I give this to? You know, this piece of jewelry, I no longer, this is not, not, not my style anymore. It might be somebody else's style. But, you know, the Salvation Army makes money off of, of, off of their stuff. There are sisters and there are other, and I talk sisters not just being meaning black. There are women. Yes. And there are men. And they're, they have daughters or they have sons. Some have babies. We always quick to share baby clothes. But come on, man, share, share the thing. Listen, um, listen, and I, I know you got some stylish items in your, I'm going to come shop your closet just now. Listen, <laughs> I have some things put aside for you. I want to shop Don't Pierre's closet. <laughs> Check, okay, Sarah Oyanga is putting us on blast. Where can oh. I, we're, we're coming with the merchandise, Sarah. It's, it's coming, it's coming, it's Where coming. Where can Don't I worry. buy the, Diesel? Diza. <laughs> you need to order your own glass and your own merch from, from Designs by Diza. But yes, yeah. How She Hustles merch is coming. It's, it's coming. It's coming. Soon. So, um, okay, so the next part of the conversation is because, you know, um, we've talked about, I know you, I know you don't want to, to deal with some things, but okay, let me go here first. Some fun questions. All right. Okay. All right. Some, some fun things. Let's go. If you could go to dinner with anyone, who would it be and why? I could go to dinner with anyone. I would go and sit with an indigenous elder. Mm. I would. Um, I would go. There's a there's a woman that I follow on Twitter, uh, Cindy Blackstock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the executive director of an organization that is advocating for the rights of um, indigenous children and really looking at the policies that we've had in this country that have created such devastating inter intergenerational effects. And I remember, full fangirl moment, I, I think I saw her in the mall in Ottawa. Like, I, I'm, I'm sure I saw her. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's Cindy Blackstock. And I wanted to go up to her. And I just thought like, nope, I'm gonna give her a personal space. Like, I'm not really trying to go up in her space. But she is one of those people that I just thought, to sit and speak with someone who has been doing such large, impactful, demanding, sustained, you know, work that she has to sustain. Um, I think she'd have so many lessons around how to do the thing, you know, and also stepping out of my community, stepping out of my immediate lived experience. I think that would be a fascinating conversation. Uh, we have, I have so much to learn about longevity. You know, I, I, I'm not a spring chicken, but I'm certainly, I haven't earned my full stripes yet. You know, I still feel like I have so much to learn from elders. And so um, while I don't, I don't know whether she considers, you know, how she refers to herself, but I see her as one of those women in our country who I hope earns her place. Mm. And not just within her own community, but for all women, for just being a, a real beacon of hope and just a badass. I love it. I, yeah. I love it. You see? And I was going to ask you about who you're starstruck by, but you already told me who you're starstruck by. <laughs> you know what? It's a starstruck. I don't know. Not to say that I wouldn't be starstruck, but I think it's more... I'm more in awe of experiences as opposed to people. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll tell you when, um, I think I've, I've shared this story with you before, when I had a chance to sit down for my, for my interview, I'm actually going through all the tapes when I used to be a music journalist, right? 
So I have I have a tape I haven't listened to in probably 20 years. My sit down interview with Boys to Men and Joe and all the jagged edge. So I'm going through them a little bit by little bit. But I remember when I had my interview with, with Mary J. Blige, it wasn't, of course I was in awe of her, but I think what really moved me and what I'll never forget was the message she had for me. And that was what put me in awe because I really felt like, I really felt like it was a divine message. Mm -hmm. Like it was meant for yeah. me. Like here is this Grammy award winning, sold millions of albums. And here is this little girl, young woman, I was only early twenties from Toronto. With a backpack. With a backpack, believe you me, and I a little tape recorder. That's just a good thing. in a room with this mega star. And she literally was like, everybody out. I don't know if she does that with everybody, but she literally kicked everyone out. I remember George Strombolopoulos from who used to be at Much was it was the person interviewing her before me, kicked him out, kicked her manager out, everyone. And so here I am sitting at this penthouse in New York City, she had just gotten off a plane, little old Emily with her backpack interviewing this mega star and yet what i left that room with wasn't oh my god i just interviewed mary j blige it was tears running down my cheeks as this mega star was like i'm gonna talk to you as a human and in that moment she could sense that something wasn't right in my life and so she spoke to me not as a mega star at least it didn't feel like to me. She spoke to me as a woman who wanted to encourage another young woman. And it didn't matter that I had tears running down my face and that my heart was on my sleeve. She held space for me. And so I will always share that story, not because, oh my gosh, I met Mary Jane Blythe, yeah. but because in that moment, she showed me that, like, as you said, humanity is what is going to connect us. All the other stuff, the fancy clothes, the stars and the da -da -da, the awards or whatever. When it comes down to it, who do you want to show people that you are? And it, that was what left me in awe was that this woman saw through all of my stuff and was like, I'm just going to speak to you with a word of encouragement. That's a story I don't even know I heard. See, I'm, see this is why. See, this is why I'm I'm, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm loving this. One person asked, "Is Cindy Blackstock a member of the Indigenous community or an activist for the community?" She is a member of the Indigenous community. Unfortunately, I don't know how to pronounce the name of her nation. But if you Google her, Cindy Blackstock is on Twitter. She's the executive director. I wrote it down because she really is. I hope one day to meet her and to just hear her speak. She's the executive director of the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society of Canada. She is often at the for forefront of many of the conversations, both with the government and on Twitter around protecting children and uh, making sure that Canada honors its commitments uh, to Indigenous young people. So I tell you, the, the time I've worked at the Senate and sitting in those rooms and hearing the hearings of, um, of the Indigenous people and the, um, the school, I'm telling you. I know. It is, it is a very so it's a very sobering moment. Very, very sobering. But I'm sure there's some people who have this uh, want to know, because I want to know. You got to meet Michelle Obama. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I, did. I did. You know what? I've never asked you that question. Uh -huh. I don't even know why I've never asked you that question. And I thank you for in, inviting us to even be at the event where she spoke and we all got to take a picture with Sophie Gregoire. We didn't get to take a picture with uh, Michelle Obama, but um, hey, we, we, we took a, a, a picture with the first lady of our nation. So that That's was really right. good. And she, you know what? Here's a fun fact, people. When Sophie Gregoire met the How She Hustles group of women that Emily pulled to the front in the break, she cried. She was in tears. She was in awe that these women came together and, and, and that could only come from the essence of meeting you. But back to my question, um, <laughs> Michelle Obama. What was it like to meet her? Yeah, I have a picture on my wall actually. Um, okay, so what was it like? Uh, wow. 
it was like a master class mm. in how to interact with people and to see their spirits in a split second. Like, honestly, it was like this, this incredible woman, Michelle Obama, had thousands of people in that stadium there to hear her speak and had probably what, maybe a hundred people lined up to meet her afterward. And yet with every single person, she was present. Mm. Like, I don't know how she did it, but it, was, it wasn't like, yeah, you're person number 69 in the line. Hi, yeah, let's take our picture. Nope. It was like she saw you and what you brought to the space. And I can't imagine what that must take. Mm -hmm. I know nothing of her life except after watching Becoming and reading her book. It's just so oversized. And yet she found a way to see the humanity and make people feel like their presence meant something. Each and every person, even within a two minute interaction, it was like, I see you. I see that you're human. Don't worry about my title. Don't worry, respect it. But she really opened the door in such a simple way by her body language, uh, the way that she looked at people, the way she addressed them by first name, the way she asked them about what they did, the way she would remember and ask a follow-up question. Just that was such a, a masterclass in just how to always walk with humility. And it's something that I'm still working on. Of course, I am no, there is only one Michelle Obama ever will be. But I think that day I walked away with a very simple but profound reminder that no matter where we go or what we do, how brief or how long our encounter is, we can make people feel seen. Mm. That's what it's like. We can make people feel seen. And when I think about that, I think on mentorship because mentorship can happen um, right with somebody that you know, or somebody from a distance. What, what, when you, when you hear mentorship, what does that mean to you? What, what is that? Is that important to you? First off? It is. And I have some incredible informal mentors. I always have like, you know, this is why it's important for me to mention some of these names, Dr. Pamela Pelt, you know, Judge Pelt. Auntie um, Pam, she just, Auntie Pam. Went, she just had a birthday. Yes, right? Auntie Pam, I think about so many, you know, people like Marie Mulliner, um, incredible mentor, people like, um, you know, there's even people who are mentoring you and they don't even know that that's how you see them. Yeah. They don't know that they're teaching you that you've got your notebook out. You never know who's watching. You don't, you don't. And so you don't need to have a formal relationship to be able to share wisdom, to provide a blueprint, to maybe give an example of how you might walk through the world. And I thank those people for doing it. Like, you know, yeah. Selena is not my personal. I wish she was. She's not my personal mentor. Not at all. But yeah. my goodness, I have so many dog ears in this book. You have nobody's business. <laughs> Underlines and highlights. Because... When we share the way that we've walked through the world, no doubt there is somebody who's looking for that example, for that inspiration, for that blueprint. And so, yes, I've had formal mentors. I joined the Civic Action Diversity Fellows Program. I applied. My formal mentor was Bean Herji, a formal, uh, former uh, bank executive who was very generous with her wisdom. I mean, to be in the C-suite as a woman of color in Canada, no easy feat. I was so lucky, fortunate, blessed mm -hmm. to have spent time with her. I also got an incredible coach, Tina, Tina Diaz. I got to shout her out. Man, what a powerhouse. And to me, what the greatest gift of her mentoring wasn't necessarily showing me how to achieve success in the same industry as her because we don't necessarily work in the same space 
The power of mentoring there was that she allowed me to hear myself. She asked me the questions that forced me to, to listen to myself on a deeper level. And I think that's one of the greatest benefits of having a great mentor. There are people who can show you how to walk in their footsteps, but then there are people who can show you how to walk in yours. Ooh. Right? That, that's what it's about. It's the people who don't say, come, do what I did. It's the people who say, no, do what you do. And I'm going to ask you the questions to help you get there. Remind you of what you've said. Remind you of what you've done. Remind you of your divine and particular assignment so that you're not going to be the mentee that does what I do. You're going to be the mentee that does what you are designed to do. That's the power of a great mentor. This is no longer an inspired conversation. This is the inspired conversation audiobook. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Okay, this is the inspired conversation audiobook. Um, you can view it once again if you're um, on the replay and you're not on the live. And if you're on the live and you need to listen to it again, because I know I'm going to have to listen to it. Again. I'm going to listen to it again because you had some great questions and yeah, but like sure. you know, on on YouTube, Victory Speaks Seven, and on uh, Facebook, if you're watching Facebook Live, Victory Speaks Seventy Seven. Now, I, I, I listen. We have a crucial decision to make here. It is, five, <laughs> it, is, it is four minutes to nine, and and we still have one segment to go. You're just so rich, and I'm just gonna you know listen, people. We've been planning this conversation for a year. You have no idea. Okay. So, um, how you, how you do, um, we're gonna take a. How you doing? You good to go for ne a next twenty minutes or so? You know what? Let, let's talk for another 15 minutes if, okay. if that's okay with you. Honestly, okay. I, I think there's some things that some people may, you know, we haven't touched yet. And I and I just want to pay honor to your anniversary. So we're gonna we're gonna jump into a, a video right here okay. and uh do this. Okay. For those let's of you this. who aren't familiar with how she hustles, it's a little network that grew and grew and continues to grow. We connect diverse women through social media and events like this, and we've been doing so for 10 years. How She Hustles was created in 2010, basically by accident. I was up one night juggling my day job, family commitments, volunteering in the community, and I was like, damn, always hustling. There must be other people who can relate to my experience at 4 a.m. trying to finish this project. So I posted a message on Facebook. And of course, all the other hustlers responded immediately and said, I'm up too. This is what I'm working on. So I said, well, why don't we meet? Maybe there's something that I can help you with. You can help me with something. And we can create a little bit of a fellowship around us. event we hosted and sold out was because of the support of women like you, because of the creativity of women like you, and because there were women of all backgrounds who said, I want a space where I feel welcome, where I feel reflected, and where I don't feel like I am one of the only or the only one. So we're going to keep doing this, and there is more to come. Thank you so much for sharing that. I tell you, I watched that. I brought my Kleenex out. I didn't think I was going to cry, but can I just say, honestly, I miss those gatherings. I think, I think we all do. Um, you know, Joan had mentioned it earlier, coming together and, and bringing women together. And I, I can't wait for um, us to be able to do that again. 
And, um, you know, for those of you now joining us live and on the replay, I am interviewing Emily Mills of How She Hustles. We are in part three, hour three of the conversation. We never meant to go three hours, but the conversation has been so rich. So um, you never know if I can get if I get an editor, maybe we can slice it up. Um, uh, if, if anybody wants to come be an editor on my team, but um, or you have a, you're an interning. But I'm just going to say um, as we start to wind down the conversation, it would be really remiss of me not to just show some people a, a little bit about how she hustles. You just celebrated your 10th anniversary and you did this during COVID. And I know this was totally different for you. How, how did you do it? How, because, you know, when people came to your events, networking, meeting the woman, that was one of the great things about it. A woman, there was, you set an atmosphere. When you went to, a, when you go to a How She Hustles event, you set the atmosphere that there's no competition here, that no matter if you come as a bank executive or you come as a prime minister's wife, or you come as a senator, it, you come as a, a, cele a movie star, we are all the same level when we come into this room. Why was that important for you? Because we all have gifts to share and we're all on a journey. Like, man, this is what people didn't see, but what kept me up at night before a House She Hustles event. I would print out the list, even when we had 250, 300, 400 guests. One of the most critical steps for me before any event was I would print out the entire RSVP list. And I wanted to look through every single name because every single person mattered. And I wanted to really, for the people who like Sarah Onyango, who would trek or Sabine Daniel or all of those people who would trek from Montreal and Ottawa who would come in. It was important for me to, to, to pray and, and trust. We used to pray all the time and just ask for just their protection as they journeyed and just for their safety, but also my gratitude for them for making that effort. Never take for granted that level of support that people would choose to spend time in an environment that you helped to create. But then also for the people who had never been there before, it was so important for me to look through the list and say, oh, okay, I've never seen this name before. So that the, to the best of my ability, those folks would be greeted properly. And thank you to people like yourself, Mohine, um, Leslie, uh, Miss Jones, so many other people just for being there to be the welcoming team, Dion, Deza, People to say, you're welcome here. Yeah. If yeah. you had a terrible day, don't worry. Yeah. If your makeup is running down your face. Don't worry. If you feel nervous, don't worry. You're welcome here. It's about yeah. understanding that it doesn't matter how many awards or how much, how big your house is or what job you have. Everybody has worries. Everybody has dreams and hopes for themselves and their family. And so it's not about me setting a stage of everybody being neutral. The fact that we are all humans already yes. means that our right is to be respected and to be treated as somebody just because we are. Yes, yes. The, the, it was just about reminding us all, myself included, you're no better than anybody else. It's just about creating a space where we can all see that in each other, that we're all just trying to make it through and live our best lives, that's all. And, you know, um, I think, Emily, we need to have a conversation if you were willing to come back, really, and go deep into how she hustles. Because I think people need to understand, you know, the dinners. You know, mm -hmm. when I talk about the, the first time, when, when, I, when I think about the Mother's Day brunch, when I think about the brunches, that was an event by itself. Um, when I think about Start Up and Slay, you know, what that is and the woman, I think it would be really valuable to women, especially in this time and anybody listening, it doesn't matter if you're male, female, actually, I think anybody listening to understand the brand of how she hustles, what it does, why it's so important. I think it's going to help people frame what they're doing because you have gained such wisdom and knowledge, you know, getting sponsorship, going into those rooms, negotiating. And you talked about earlier um, when you have to, you see, may, may see a big figure, and knowing when to say no and knowing what is right and when to say yes. 
-hmm. again, and I mean, you've answered some of this, um, but as I think about it, you went from being working from CBC, doing this as a hustle, because the hustle is when you're doing it on the side, but you kept the hustle name and then you went full time. What was that game changer? What was that thing that made you know that, no, I got to do this now all the way? It's so funny. People often think there was a specific tipping point, like there was a thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. I felt so conflicted about where I could make the most impact that at a certain point, I just got tired of indecision. That's what it came down to. I was like, enough of this one foot in, one foot out. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. And one day I just said, that's enough. And it goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. Uh, I'm very, very grateful that my life has been far from perfect, but I have very few regrets. And when I decided to transition out of CBC and pursue how she hustles full time, one of the critical decision pieces was, I don't want to have any regrets. And if I never take a chance on myself, if I never take a chance on this community, if I never take a chance on this passion, I'm always going to wonder what if. And so when I decided, nope, that's not a cost I'm willing to pay, I was like, if it doesn't work out, I can always come back or find another opportunity, but I'll never be able to say I tried it if I don't take a leap. And so one of my former form, formal mentors, uh, Ebony Rowe, from Honey Jam, she used to say, leap and the net will appear. Look, I'm not telling people to just jump off the bridge and hope that yeah. they're going to land on their feet. Yeah. But I think we have to trust ourselves and trust, as I said before, that we are being prepared, divinely positioned. Our steps are being ordered. We're being placed in spaces and places and rooms and moments when we stumble and when we stand tall, all of those things are meant to get us to that point of decision. And that's where I was when I was like, okay, is this the point to stay with what I know or leap into what I kind of know, but I knew that there was a lot around that corner that I couldn't see. And I had to believe at a certain point that even though I couldn't see what was around the bend, that it was going to be good and that it was going to be meant and that it was going to be impactful. And my gosh, I'm so glad that I took that leap. And related to that, I'll just say, you mentioned some of the events we used to do. I'll, I remember when I announced that we were, weren't going to do the How She Hustles brunch anymore. Oh my God. It was like, what? I don't know. It was like I put a puppy up on the street or something with no food or something. Like it was just it was blasphemy. It, Sorry, it was blasphemy. Oh it my was goodness. blasphemy. Was like, how could you not do brunch? What are you doing? And again, you knew I sat there. I didn't know what was ahead, but I knew that I was ready for something else. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you asked that question because I have to remind myself as well that if we always cling to what we know, mm. we will never know what may be meant, right? If we just always cling to what we know, what if there you are meant to do something different, more impactful, something that is going to take you to a different level, something that is going to change a different life. If you always cling to what is comfortable and known, you'll never get there. I didn't know that after brunch, which everyone thought, you've been doing this for five years. Yeah, it's right. amazing. Yeah. It's a thing. How it's could good. you stop? What do you have planned? I had nothing planned. But you know what, Miss Nicole? As I look back on that now, if I hadn't stopped doing brunch, I may never have done her story in black. Yeah. If I had not stopped doing brunch, I may never have hosted a round table with the prime minister. If I had not stopped doing brunch, I may never have met first lady, Michelle Obama, brought a group of women with me. 
if I had not stopped doing brunch, I maybe never would have had the confidence to have left CBC, done How She Hustles full time, and then gone on to do Startup and Slay. We all have that moment where we have to decide what is meant. You have learned to trust your inner voice. And, and, and there's an art to that. And, and again, as I say, I, I think I, I just, you know, the show just became a masterclass. No, no, no. This, 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 this be like a masterclass. You know, I'm just saying, I have worked with lots of people, as you know, and I don't, I don't always call them out. I have worked with Dr. Phil. I have worked with Robin, um, Robin Sharma and all these people. And I've gone to their stuff. Okay. I've sat in the rooms and people pay hundreds of dollars, sometimes thousands of dollars, my friend. But what people are getting here tonight oh, is like Tony Robbins move over. I'm just saying, Listen, left I, ground, I, I love you, but you got to go. No, you are creating the space and the platform and asking the questions that are, but you, you're asking me questions that other people have never asked me. Mr. Cole, you know that we've had many conversations. And so I think that's also, this is a testimony of you and the Victory Speaks brand that you are building. It's no accident that in this time, your voice and your platform is cutting through. You just had Dr. Jean Augustine, you have Fenella coming. I mean, please don't take for granted what you're doing. I say this to you as my friend, as my peer mentor, as my life mentor. But like, I just say this to you and I say this to all of us. So often we're so humble with our gifts. And yet when you look around, not everyone as a matter of fact, no one can do what you do the way you do it. So always be humble with it. But at the same time, take your flowers, girl. You are doing such amazing work and I'm so humbled to be here tonight. Really, I am. I will also say um, it's no accident that this is the first conversation, live conversation I've had for 2021. Right. I feel like that was it's meant, you know, um, that sometimes when life is unpredictable, all you need is the right person to be that bridge to the next chapter. And so I thank you for helping me to write it tonight is, I know is a book, is a bookmark. I can just feel it. Oh, uh, Emily. Yeah. You, you're showing sure you're showing sure how to do it, girl. And we're getting lots of hearts and flowers <laughs> coming up now. So I really appreciate, appreciate every, everyone. And I appreciate the time you're taking, you know, and I'll be honest. Cause I, you know, uh, one of my new mentors says vulnerability is the new currency and you know, it, it takes a lot. And, you know, sometimes I want to quit. Sometimes I'm like, why am I even doing this, this, this show? And um, the money's not coming in. This is not coming in, but I feel alive when I'm here and the conversations and I, you know, I've, I've put down so many dreams for so long, and this is one of the dreams that I put down. So for as long as, as, as God said, this is where I need you, um, you know, and I tell people I, I was, the name alone, I was trying to register for two years. And then one morning, two o'clock in the morning, there it was. So, you know, it's, it's the time and you, you know, it's, it's, it's learning that voice and the fact that um, you're willing to be an iron sharpener, just not, not just for me, but for many by what you do, by how you show up, by how you show up in the space. Um, you've taught me so much and you always you always challenge me, even when you don't even know to ask the right questions. Um, I thank everyone for tuning in. Um, there's so much more I want to ask, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to... <laughs> I don't want to keep talking too, but my, my bum is starting to get a little. Yeah, yeah, like it's but I'm like, this is better than you know. If I had a, if I had another video, I would I would play it. I'm gonna just show, show some of the comments. Uh, the oh, 10th anniversary oh. virtual celebration was highlight of Thank 2020. You. Thank you. It was actually it was fantastic, and I have to shout out and thank buyblacks.com as well. Uh, we were, I haven't even put it out there. I've again, been taking a break off social media and just kind of getting back on my feet, but we were voted. Thank you to buyblacks.com. Yes. My nominator, who I still don't know. It wasn't me. And uh, all it was of me. 
<laughs> and all of the incredible people who supported us are How She Hustles 10th Anniversary won Best Virtual Event of 2020 from their People's Choice Awards. I was so proud of that event um, because of the way that it engaged people, the way that even in a global pandemic, I felt the vibes of community. Like it was just beautiful. It's still online. So if you didn't see it before, please go back and watch it. Get yourself a drink. If you need a, a, a you know an uplifting night in, um, please go back and watch it. Uh, there's so much content on my YouTube. Even a year ago, I can't believe ago. I can't believe it. A year ago this month, we also started our virtual Instagram series. Yes, that was uh, amazing. Yes, and so we have watch those conversations, people. What? Can't believe it. So we have all kinds of content. You can go back and watch experts coming on. We had a, a, a guided meditation, yoga, all kinds of things. But, you know, this is our new reality. But we have to see, as you always do, Miss Nicole, we have to see the glass half full. Because if we don't, we just won't be able to sustain ourselves. We have to see the silver lining in this, see the blessings, see the connections, see the opportunities, feel the love. Honestly, COVID-19 can take away many things from many people, but it can't take away true connections that are meant to last. Totally, totally. And you know what? One of the things that you did in 2020 with that series, you made sure that you made it accessible. You brought in ASL interpreters, you know, and um, they taught us on how to make our our um, our shows better, yeah. And and to do better, like what you're not seeing now is that I made sure that there's closed captioning happening on the Facebook feed. Beautiful. So Beautiful. that's there. I, I'm I'm trying to work on my colors. I know I'm going to have to go to that class. We probably need to bring them in to do that oh, master yeah. class on <laughs> being better. You know what? When you think of the visually impaired, those that are hearing impaired, how can we make our space better when they hear the conversations? Uh, the great Sarah Oyango, Queen Sarah, is seeing um, quite the masterclass. Yes, um, you. Sarah, you're going to make us cry tonight. Victory speech. I'm waiting for your masterclass, Sarah. Just let me know when that happens. Come on now. Okay. And I <laughs> One of the people we have to shout out, you know, the caterers that really came, like Amanda Hammer. When I think hey, about hey. the black cake cheesecake. Oh, Amanda missed the shout out. Okay, Amanda Edible Bliss 11. I love what you're doing. You missed the shout out earlier. Not only an incredible friend for many, many years, but just what an inspiring entrepreneur. Incredible, incredible um, pastries, cakes, catering, the whole nine. And boy, let me tell you, I, I know that when, when Prime Minister Trudeau hey. came to our round table and he took the boy, I know his staff just looked at that box and his, his you know, RCMP hey. staff and all that thing. And they took that box of treats from Edible Bliss. And it was just yet another way that I was so proud to know that How She Hustles stood for something that was going to leave a lasting impression, even at that level. Emily, thank you for continuing to open doors. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're, you're a true pioneer. You're a trailblazer, even in your youth. Um, can you tell us what's next for How She Hustles, or is that not ready to be revealed yet? Uh, okay, there's a newsletter coming. Okay, wait. wait, wait, wait we could okay. more is coming. So get on our get on our newsletter, HowSheHustles.com. Okay. But can I? I, I just want to end maybe on this note. Yeah. We can't truly rest if we're always thinking about what's next, mm. right? And I'm not saying that I'm doing a great job at it, but I'm trying because I took a break at the end of December. When I really sat with it, I realized that I had been on the How She Hustles gerbil wheel for 10 years and had never really paused. Some people may not remember, but when we held the fifth How She Hustles brunch, I had just given birth. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I had not too long before given birth to my second son. So I had two kids under two. Okay, two kids under two. And one was a couple months old. The other one was less than two years old. I remember welcoming 250 women into this ballroom and my milk was leaking <laughs> it was at that point where i was like 
I'll be right back. And of course it was that kind of room where we could just talk to teens. But I had one son upstairs with a sitter and the other one waiting to be nursed. I remember when I was pregnant, going and looking for venues, nursing in bathrooms at, you know, while having meetings with our team, um, changing diapers. And my sons, our sons have grown up watching this brand evolving. And I figured that by the end of 2020, I was like, I think I've earned a break now. I'll be back. I don't know what's around that door. No different than I didn't know what was around the door when I transitioned out of CBC. I didn't know what was around that door when I stopped doing brunch. But I still have to have that faith that whatever is next for How She Hustles, I'll be clear on what it is. And when it's meant to be birthed, it will. And so right now, I'm slowly coming out of my shell, but I'm taking my time. And so with cups, gallons, bowls of humility, I just want to remind anybody who's on there and remind myself that it's okay to slow down. Mm -hmm. It's even okay to stop. I know in this time we think we have to be relevant all the time. We have to be on all the time. We have to share all the time. We have to post all the time. No, you don't. And if the true success we're looking for and building towards is a legacy of excellence, we have to give ourselves time to re, to refresh, to reimagine, to relax. So what's next? I have some ideas and I'm just trusting that they will be fully birthed when they are ready. And in the meantime, in the meantime, I'm gonna try and enjoy the fruits of the labor so far. If all we do is work, 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 when do we have a moment to say, actually, I've done something good. And that's why it's so important even for you as you continue to do this show week after week, sometimes multiple times a week. Take a minute and reflect on how much incredible work you've done. Instead of looking at all the things that you haven't done and all the things that haven't been completed or that you haven't birthed yet, look at what's already been born. You're doing this amazing work and lifting so many people up at a time that they need it. But remember that you also need time for you. And we say it as women all the time. We say it, but we don't do it. My phone didn't blow up when I didn't post for a month. Yeah, yeah. My Nothing happened to me if I didn't go to that next Zoom meeting. It's okay. So what's next is when this Zoom is over or when this podcast is over, when the show is over. The masterclass, the Emily masterclass. The Victory Speaks masterclass. <laughs> I am going to go upstairs. I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. I'm going to put my feet in some Epsom salt and I'm going to read a book. And when I'm done that, I'm going to write in my journal. I'm going to give thanks for this day that was. And I'm going to close my eyes and trust that whatever I need to know for tomorrow will come when I wake up. Emily Mills, mm -hmm. the power of the pause. You are such a blessing. Oh. Um, and as we, we, we tune out here, um, I, I love what you said. We cannot truly really rest if we have to keep worrying about what's next. Um, and I'm still I, learning that. And I thank you for helping to remind me of that as well. I thank you so much. And if people want to reach out to you, um, they can follow you at howshehustles.com. No, not at howshehustles on Instagram, Twitter, and on YouTube. Make sure and follow her YouTube channel. Make sure and follow her. Send her a message. Send and get on the page. newsletter, the newsletter. That's where subscribe we're Subscribe to the newsletter. Go to www.howshehustles.com and subscribe to the newsletter. There's so much to learn. Emily, I, I want to thank you so much again for being here. You are, you are such a, a blessing to us all. 
And um, if anybody wants to tune in again to the Victory Speaks Masterclass, the show that just got retransformed to the Victory Speaks Masterclass, you can follow me on Victory Speaks uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube, Victory Speaks 7. We're building the YouTube channel. So folks, you know, YouTube, if you want to help us monetize this, YouTube, we need the numbers. We're still low, but you know what? We're doing it. And I'll tell anybody out there, you know, I'm doing this on my own and I'm learning as I grow. And there are great people like Emily and like Shirley, uh, Joseph from Black Content Creators, Tristan, right? There are people who are giving me advice, Dr. Vibe. You know, if you have an idea out there, go into your tribe. Don't hesitate to ask. And and people are forgiving in this season. I think COVID has allowed people to be a little more forgiving. Um, the Victory Speaks podcast speaks about the Victory Speaks formula. And um, you can catch that on any way you can get your podcast. It's an audio podcast. And also, we're having great conversations now on Clubhouse. Um, with a lot of with a lot of great people, um, and I, I want to encourage you all today. Take a time, take the moment to enjoy the view, take the moment to enjoy your inspired conversations. And I say inspired conversations. I'm calling it every conversation you can be inspired by it, whether it's good or it's bad or it's sad. There's always something that you can pull out of it. And I'm not just saying it as a cliche. There is a blessing in the storm. You know, be intentional. Remember to smile today. Remember to smile with somebody. Your smile comes through your mask. Even though you're wearing your mask, think about that mask. Think about the mask that you're wearing. What are people seeing and learning about you? You know, it just takes a conversation to change someone's day. But do it with truth, with love, with intention, with life. How are you coming into the space? What does victory mean to you? Some people use the word success, but I use victory. Victory does not mean that you have to cross the finish line first. What victory means to me, and I really believe it, is that you just have to cross the finish line as your best self. And you know what's the best part about this race? You can do it as a sprint or you can do it as a relay and you can pass the baton onto the next person and then onto the next person so that eventually everybody becomes a winner because you share yourself, you share your gift, you share your love. And um, I want to leave you with this quote. And, you know, think of a quote, share it with someone. And this quote is by Arthur Ashe. Stay where you are. Use what you have. Do what you can. And once again, thank you everyone for tuning in. It has been a pleasure being here with you. I know the show has gone a little longer than normal to light, but that's okay. Um, share with your friends, you know, tell us what you've learned. Uh, give us some comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you from wherever you've tuned in. This is Nicole and Emily saying, bye everyone, have an inspired conversation and let your victory speak, your victory speaks. <laughs>